bench looking at the clipboards from the various assistant coaches that Bill Self has. Now remember this, he went seven for nine in the second half in a pressure pack game against Florida nine days ago. Interestingly enough, mm. uh, Darrell Arthur missing a, a good free throw shooter, 81%. Mm. Yep. To his teammates, he's known as Shady. Looking shady about that stroke. That's because strength coach Andrea Huddy has put some weight on him, so <laughs> Slim's going out the window. <laughs> Pack it back the other way for the Trojans. Nice play. That Set time play. Stewart got an open look, Fran. You're oh, right, and he knocks it down. Screen. Yep. Set up nicely. And that's the play that they actually walked through and mm -hmm. knew was coming at some point, but screen. they stunned him with it. Yep, screen to screener, flare screen for Stewart. Stewart. And you see they face guard again. Stewart has 23. Here's Rush out top. And this is what we mean by making Kansas play the way they don't really want to play. With two minutes to go, Rush! Excellent heads-up play by Robinson. When you overplay Russian Chalmers, you set yourself up for the backdoor cut. Second time tonight, that's what we call it. We said earlier, basketball is a game of counters. You want to take away my strength, I'm going to backdoor and see if we can't get something cheap at the rim. No two easier than this one There it Rush. is. You see the face guard? Defender turns his back from Rush. It's funny, they got that against Florida two or three times. Look at the little drop pass by Robinson. Rush sneaks along the baseline. And as a defender, the freshman Lewis turned his head from Rush. You never help up away from the baseline, Mark. You stay and let the ball come to you so you can guard Rush and Robinson. As soon as Lewis turned his head, stepped up, it was lights out. Robinson with eight dimes tonight. You know, Bill Self calls him the glue to this team. Defends. Uh, leads the team with an average of five assists per game. And he's had enough to feed the needy tonight. And now if you're USC, you've got to score relatively quickly in your sets. Back it up court quickly for the Trojans. It's a high screen from Young. They tried the flare screen again, but Gibson got stripped. Arthur almost walked with it. Got to run clock now if you're Kansas. Pull it out. Jayhawks using good discretion on these last three mm -hmm. possessions offensively. Seven-point lead. There's about four or five possessions in this game, so make the clock your friend. Robinson will pull it back up. Very methodical, very workmanlike. A little high screen from right. And good hustle by Gibson to cause the turnover. Lewis. One minute, one minute to play. Great ball fake oh, by Young, and he got packed. Young got it rejected. That's the ninth of the night. Well, Young tried to go back on the other side of the rim. That's where you want to usually take it. But right with that length came out of nowhere. Kansas has been impressive at the defensive end as well. See the shot fake? And right just laying for it. Problem there is there were three shot blockers in the vicinity. He got away from two of them. It's Julian Wright that told his teammates prior to that win against Florida a little over a week ago, he said, guys, we have to grow up. It was an impassioned speech, an impromptu speech mm -hmm. in the hallway of the hotel prior to the game after a very lackluster performance the previous night at that tournament in Las Vegas. And the guys even said afterwards, hey, you know, when Juju speaks, that's his nickname. When he speaks, we listen. And he certainly did. Mm -hmm. And they played their best game ever the following night. And I think that's where this team is. It's a very talented team. They're still searching for roles. Who scores? Who passes? Who goes to the boards? Stewart off the mark, and it's one and done. Rush with the rebound. And Floyd, I think, is telling his team to come up and foul. Almost a match between the game clock and the shot mm -hmm. clock as Hackett commits the foul. Well, they were able to keep USC Fran at arm's length they for most were. of the night. It was always about a four or five point cushion for most of the way. 
And a good experience for what is still a young Kansas team to play in pressure situations. See, the bar has been set because of the win over Florida, and now Bill Self's job is to get this team to play as close to that bar as possible. When I was coaching, Mark, in a 30-game season, you're going to have five games where you're at your best, five games where you play poorly, and the other 20 is really who you are. The key now is to find out how good this Kansas team is Florida an aberration, or can they play that well every night? Trying to find their level. Bill Self said at the start of the night, we have to find an identity for ourselves. Young gunning away off the mark. Rebound rush, and that's going to do it. This one is cooked, glazed, and ready to be sliced. Kansas is going to win this one and improve to 7-2 and two on the season for USC. Their five-game winning streak comes to an end. Bill Self sees his team grow up, albeit maybe just a little bit tonight. They started three sophomores and a freshman, so the learning curve will be steep. 72-62, the final score up next, quite frankly, with Stephen A. Smith. There's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Fran Fischilla and our entire crew, I'm Mark Jones, saying so long, everybody. I do not care that Florida is the number two ranked team in the nation. I don't care that they are the defending SEC champions now that they've beaten up on Arkansas. All I know is this. The Michigan squad that I saw is better than Florida. I don't care what people like my director says. Her name is Lisa Smith, y'all. She's from Florida. She thinks that she's a real big-time gator. Forget all of that. Roll the animation. Also tonight, the one and only Chuck D's in the house to bring us the poetry of the greatest with Ali Rap. Plus, the UFC's Tito Ortiz is a lover and a fighter. And I know you're going to love his girlfriend, too. All that and more next on Quite Frankly. What's up, everybody? What's going on? How y'all doing? Thank y'all for coming out. Welcome to Quite Frankly. It seems no matter what the BCS tries to do to crown a national college football champion, its system is inherently flawed. The latest case in point is this Sunday's poll where voters leapfrog Florida over Michigan into the January 8th title game against Ohio State. That decision has raised more questions than answers about the committee's ability to ever find a system, barring a playoff, that will be seen as fair by all. Joining me right now to discuss the BCS mess is Mr. Matt Hayes, a senior writer for Sporting News, and Mr. Dan Wetzel, a college football columnist for Yahoo Sports. Matt, Dan, welcome back to the show. You know I always appreciate you guys being here. Let's get right to it. In the midst of all this controversy, did the BCS get the national title game right? Matt, I'll start with you. Where's the controversy? Uh, I still don't understand where the controversy is. You've got one team that played the toughest schedule in the country, according to the NCAA. They won the best conference in the nation, according to anyone who watches college football. And then you've got another team who played in a poor conference this year, and then all of a sudden, they lose to the team, the number one team in the country. And then now we're saying, this, well, Michigan should be there. Why should Michigan be there? All right, Matt, uh, Dan, you answer that question. Do you agree with that? I, I agree. Florida was the team to get in. I think. It's in a logical system, and so you're trying to put logic to it is dangerous. But I agree, in terms of what matchup this system's going to produce, then Ohio State and Florida hit. Florida has the best resume. They beat more good teams than anyone else in the country. Uh, they deserve to be in this spot. Well, Dan, if that's the case, how did, this, how did all of this happen? How did it even become a debate as to whether or not Michigan or Florida State, or Florida, I'm sorry, should be in this mix? Can you explain that? Well, I think people, uh, you know, people got caught up in the excitement of the Ohio State Michigan game and when Michigan lost that game they left them at number two they probably should have dropped them it doesn't matter what the poll said in the middle of November it's the last poll and if you lay out the resumes of Michigan and Florida in the last game when all is said and done Florida has a better resume they beat more teams that were better than the teams Michigan beat Michigan not play a great schedule the Big Ten was a failure it wasn't a good did not have a good season and uh, because of that, I think you have to take a logical look at it and say Florida gets the nod. All right, let me move on. After losing the number one Ohio State, Michigan, of every team you're talking about, remained second in the BCS standards. Since then, in consecutive weeks, they've been jumped first by USC and now Florida, even though the Wolverines haven't played a single game. How can we rationalize this, Matt? 
Well, there's my question, Stephen. Where was all the complaining when USC jumped them? Why was no one complaining about that? Now all of a sudden, because Florida jumped them, now there's it's something to complain about. There's nothing to complain about. The bottom line is you have to look at the entire landscape of a season. You can't just look at one game, which, oh, by the way, was not a three-point loss. That was a couple plays from being an 18-point blowout. So you look at the entire landscape of the season, you look at what Florida did, you